Hey, what's going on, guys, girls? Yeah, it's flashing red. Okay. All right. I'm not sure if I did a video on this one or not. I don't think so. Three pages. Even my old invoice. Oh, I like that. This is for invoice. Ranger. Puck mount. Phone number is. Uh, verify. Looking forward to getting it all hooked up. Take your time. Do your right as you know. And this is for John. All right. Uh, let's take a look at this. And there's a couple other things I wanted to cover. I've been. It's been a long time coming. People have been asking these questions. There's a lot of other people out there that do their own little thing. And I usually try to avoid even talking about it. But we'll get into it. You know, like uh, adding channels and stinger boards. Some of the stuff I've done, yeah, I have 80s, you know, 1980s. And some of the stingers, but nothing like what's available today. Real bipolar transistors up to like maybe 2004. We'll cover that in a minute though. Well, let's take a look at this. 955. Alright. Yeah, you see the meter go woo woo woo, you know, all that woo 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 stuff. But it's a splatter box. It appears that someone just opened up the AMC on this radio. But as you can see, all the distortion in it, it's a massive amount of distortion. To about this point, the radio is okay. And then after that point, not only is this the splatter, the intermodulation distortion. Let's see how much we actually have. It's not bad at one megahertz either way. Let's see. I don't see none on this one. But there's a there's different versions of these radios that'll cause it. And some people say it doesn't matter. They're clueless. Or they're just taking your money is what they're doing. And I know some people get upset at that, but it is the way it is. If you're seeing harmonics you're seeing them at all, you got to imagine these radios have traps and filters to eliminate that. So there's actually an abundance more than what you think or see. The radio is generating that. It's drawing curve, dissipating the heat. Okay, it's generating a lot of heat. When you eliminate the harmonics, you have more power at the fundamental frequency. The smartest way of doing it is you don't need to produce that power. You keep the radio running cleaner, cooler, longer. And yeah, we do the maximum. So let's take a look at that. And especially if you put it into an amplifier. Let's go to 30 kilohertz. And of course, without certification, it's useless. If they don't show you everything and the certifications, they stroke in you, man. Alright, let's take a close look at this. Here, watch these two at the same time. Let me forget the meter. Always forget the meter. It doesn't mean as much. I think you guys are catching on. Let's try to get that on there right. See it spreading out? See the distortion? That should focus. See all the distortion in there? That's kind of sort of like what I'm going to get into here shortly about inductors and Q factors and resonance. This isn't exactly the same, but in a way it is. It's all a tuned circuit. And this circuit's not tuned. Without being able to look for this, measure this, how are you going to know it's there? See it? It's all lost power. You're drawing current, generating a lot more heat and dirty. No, it's just a timeout timer. Alright, so let's just for the heck of it, let's see kind of how it's receiving. Not even 120 barely. We'll get into this radio here shortly. Okay. Q factor. It's like the performance of a coil. You know, it's lost in resonant bandwidth. A lot like an antenna. Naturally, with an antenna, the best antenna 
is a very narrow banded antenna. It's only resonant really at one frequency. That's the best antenna you're going to have for one frequency. The wider it is, <clears throat> well, some are going to say it's good, you know, covering more frequencies, maybe even another band. But then you're going to pick up more noise also. Other noise of uh, harmonics of those other frequencies. You just get a lot more noise. So it's a, it's a two-way street. A more broader banded like inductor or coil can carry more frequencies also. And you know, people are always asking hard drive, should I just get a Cobra 29 and put a channel kit in it? I still got some A pluses. I was just digging in my damn drawer, couldn't I? I don't want to be digging too much, too much stuff in here. I, I got them saved for possibly a couple radios in the future. Maybe, maybe we'll do another 29 or two. We don't do any 29s. We haven't done 29s for a long time. Just a couple customers. But it's like, okay, they want a 29 and they want a stinger. Yeah, I did a lot of that in the past. A lot of them. Many thousands of them. And you know it's profitable. It is. It's profitable doing that. But when the exports started coming out with more power, say around, you know, 2000, around 2000, and the different classifications of amplification to signify the difference between AM and sideband, they're putting out 50 watts almost. Real watts, not the meter beater crap that you see. You know, it was decent, plus you can tune these radios to cover, you know, 2 megahertz band pass. So it's like, you know what? Why do this? Why take people's money on, you know, when they don't know it? When you know the difference, you don't do it. And then, you know, Turbo 4600. I mean, the RCI 2970. And there's the old Ranger to the Hunter Water from way back when. So I say, okay, cool. You know, some people like to have that experimental radio or experiment on your radio. And they make a fortune. But let me tell you something. Take a 29, put different finals in it, put echo board talkback channels. Depending on you know how you purchased it, when you purchased it, $79 radio. A stock Cooper 29 radio is worth more stock. Literally. In certain the ignorant, and that's not a bad word, the ignorant crowd, they hear picked and tuned. Well, that means less, way less. Somebody get in there, fiddle gets and just calling it picked and tuned. So now you spent a couple three hundred hours or whatever you spent for all this junk that's stuck in your radio. You know, it looks like a spaghetti bowl. You got three hundred bucks in a radio. Now it's not even worth fifty. No one wants to get inside. I've, I've done so many, worked on so many thousands of radios like that. I don't do them anymore. Period. It's like buy new, you're better. It's, it's, it's cheaper in the long run. So you, you buy something like this. All right, AM and sideband. As long as the radio is professionally tuned, and there are updates that you can do just about any radio, if you know how to do any form of reverse engineering, it's in a nutshell. The manufacturers, you know, kind of scrimp the pennies. You know, they rub them together to try to get as much out of them as they could, and that's how they manufacture them: penny here and a penny there. Then you got like the 980s and other radios. There's guys doing these channel kits. Well, they're doing more than just a, kit, a channel kit, but still. You know, you got a 4-watt radio, a little bit more than that, designed to be a 4-watt radio, FCC type. But it's no longer FCC type the minute they take the screws out. Now, you got to watch them. They're pretty witty in how they word things. So now you got just a $135 delivered to your door radio, plus whatever they charge you to do these modifications. But the radio is not going to work according to what they say unless they tell you that it's not going to work correctly. The Q factor is not capable of, of maintaining what it needs to maintain. The VCO can lock. It can do that and work. It can. It's not going to be all that great on receive. It's going to work. be a great scanner. But when you go to the transmit side, that's a whole different animal. Very, insta very unstable. If there's somebody out there who wants me to test one, get in touch with me on Facebook, send in no butchered up stuff. Another thing was, people have been asking me about used radios. There's a lot of them on the market right now. 
some people that's how they make their living or whatever they do however they do it I don't follow what people do you guys know what I do period we blow the myths the myth busters the screwdriver jockeys everything else can't help it that's what we do but when you come to use radios you would want to test them geographically what I mean by that is has there been a flood or a hurricane in the last say five years or the last six months or the last couple of weeks since the last hurricane look it up it doesn't even matter if the radio has been underwater that doesn't matter it does you know FUBAR even though it comes on and it might work you don't want it it's going to nickel and dime you all right. when, you, when you really need it it's not going to work is how it goes but if it was in a flood environment all that massive humidity inside of a building or a garage or a car in an attic and it was flooded in the whole area around you the air conditioning and the heat wasn't on anymore and the heat all those little water droplets and the moisture like being compressed inside the radio because the case isn't going to keep that moisture up it's going to get inside it's going to get inside your, your coils, your inductors. It's going to get inside everything, your potentiometers, you know. You can usually spot them when there's like rust on the screws or even on the inside. Sometimes you won't have that. So uh, before you buy yourself a heartache, and I know a lot of people sell a lot of radios. They're all over the place. I don't get into used radios at all. I've been doing this too long to understand that. There are people that do used radios and refurbish them, rebuild them from the old tube types to the old unidens and cobras. Get in touch with them. Those are usually people that you want to get in touch with that solely do that one thing only. It's like what we do, tune only. That's what you look for. What they only do one thing of. So if they're only doing like Cobra 29s, that's what you want. Only exports, that's what you want. Only amps, that's what you want. Only used, that's what you want. And check the track record. You know, you know how that goes too. You have to sift between all the bullshit that's out there. And there's a lot of it out there. But you can easily tell who's got integrity or not. I hope some of this is informative. Watch how you blow your spend. <laughs> blow your money or spend your money. They can't show you. Well, you know. Have a great night. It's hard drive. 163 down by the Rio Grande. I'm out of here. Click, click.